Hi guys, Paul Yando here bringing you another episode of A Thousand Different Ways to F Unfit. Today I'm at Brisbane International Airport with one of the busiest men in the business, Ian Powerhouse. Jacob, how are you going, Ian? Mate, great, Yando. Awesome, that's the shot. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, living under a rock, Ian is a former three time world champion, Muay Thai kickboxer. WKA middleweight kickboxing title, WKA world champion middleweight Muay Thai title and ISKA super middleweight yep. Muay Thai top. This yep. is the man himself, so to have someone like this who miss their time as he flies out to America is absolutely amazing. So, first question that I ask everyone, Ian, how do you F unfit? Fuck unfit. Oh, I'm born fit for that, man. That's like, that comes easy to me. It's like, uh, my, a few things I do really well. I fight, I eat food, and I fuck well. So. <laughs> I've got that wrapped up, man. This is how we am start fit. Awesome, okay. So, um, for the people at home, tell us a little bit about how you got into the sport. When did you get into kickboxing, boxing, and martial arts? Mate, I, from the age of four, I wanted to be world champion. I um, saw Muhammad Ali, I'm showing my age now, 47, on the black and white TV, and champion the world. And I just resonated with that. It was like, wow. You know what I mean? I wasn't your ordinary four year old. I was jumping off the roofs and doing all the crazy stuff. Um, and I resonated with that, and then, I, and then I saw he was doing something good for mankind, I wanted to do that, I really decided. it. But when he got out of the driveway, the first time I seen him calm, he goes, this is my parents' house, they never have to worry about nothing for the days they live. And I went, that's it, because I knew my parents were working two, three jobs, and you know, working hard, and I knew we, we didn't have much money, and I knew if I wanted to be heard and do something good for the world, I had to be world champion, yeah. and get money and help my family. I was six years old, we were traveling from Melbourne to Brisbane, in the back of GDS Monaro, and um, the song came on the radio, and mind you, from four to six, mum's like, there's no way you're going to be a fighter, no one's going to be a fighter. Yep. She didn't mind that, my old man's an ex-part-time commander, and didn't mind any sort of, any, any part of it. But um, the Muhammad Ali song came on the radio, and I knew then I was going to be world champion. Yep. I said, mum, I'm the champion of the world one day. We weren't allowed to answer back. She goes, no, you bloody not. I said, mum, I'm going to be champion of the world one day. She's went <laughs> over the back and bang, gave me a blood nose. And don't, don't get it wrong, I probably need that extra sort of discipline. But, um, yep. Yep. She wanted to deter me, and it set a fireball off in my gully. And all the way from Brisbane, from Melbourne to Brisbane, for two days, in my head, I'm going to be world, I'm going to be world, I'm going to be world. And mate, I got the opportunity when I was 24, the first one, five weeks notice, like from when I was 10, my favourite movie, Rocky, you know what I mean? And I got to live it. Ange Gooses couldn't fight four times world champion, Cash Gill from England. And then uh, they rung me up, I said, I want to fight. I got five weeks notice to, to fight this guy. and. Um, it was fantastic. It was on my mum's 50th birthday. I could have fought one you know what I mean? So <laughs> I trained the house down. My master trainer, he's an absolute genius. He's like the real life Mr. Miyaki. Traveled the world trying to fight every martial art. Anyway, he um he he got me ready for the fight and um he, he basically uh, knocked him out for fifth round. When I knocked the guy out, the referee goes, that's it. My hands went up. By the time my hands were up in the ring, I was a six year old kid. Every single training millisecond flashed front of my eyes. It took me back to the day I said I knew I'd be world champion. It was fantastic. That yeah, is that off was good. the hook. That yeah. is off the hook. So when you're uh, preparing and training for these fights, were there things that you would do like to anchor yourself in before a fight? Like was it a song? Was it something you'd do that got you in the zone? Or like what, what, what set you up to be focused for what was ahead of you? Um, mate, like, mate there, there's quite a few things. This might sound funny. The last thing that sort of set, sets me up for a fight I had pancakes, ice cream, <laughs> syrup. And that's that, that's my, my last meal before a fight. And it's just sort of like, it's real. It's on now, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's that's my last meal. And that's my sort of thing. It's a bit, a bit different yeah. than most of think. I've never had that question. But yeah. besides that, mate, I get I go really quiet. I go, abs people think there's something wrong, but I actually get that calm that before a fight, I warm up. Sometimes my first world title fight, I went out, my heart rate would have been probably, I don't, I don't know, 90, 60, 90. Yeah. I was that relaxed. You know when you wake up in your yeah. bedroom, and you really relax in the morning. Yep. I had that when I went to the ring for my world title fight. I was that with my first one. Um, by the by means the, the last one I had was a bit different with the open eyes can. I was like, uh, but, yep. um, yeah, that's that's mad. And then coming coming to the 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 Oscar fight, that was actually a war, mate. It was awesome. Mm. Like you, you took a couple on the chin in the early rounds, and then you come back and just punch, piss, and pick handles out of it. Just, like kicks just the whole shebang. What was was that like your hardest, toughest fight? Or what oh, was your toughest fight? By far. I've never seen someone give it to Oscar like I am seeing now. Good. 
by yep. far. The smartest fight was a fight um, I fought with Manson Gibson, my uh, first world yeah. title crack that I lost. That's big big with the brain. It was good, he never fought me again though, because I bashed him for the last one. I worked him out the last two rounds, but, yep. but he still beat me. But there's no excuses you when you lose. But um, what made the Gurkham fight so hard is, is 12 weeks before that fight, I fought Sam Solomon for the um, uh, another world title. And he basically got, in the first round, I'm going to the ring, and my masseur goes, break leg, mate. And I've never heard the same. You, you can't break my concentration when I go to the ring. And I've stopped to, what did you say that for? Like four times <laughs> I've stopped and gone, you know, like absolutely. He's like trying to tell me it means good luck. And I'm like, yeah, first round, guess what I do? Snap my leg. I've done a spin and back kick. He's done a front kick. He's hit me here and snapped my fibula. I've dropped the guy. And I've wiggled my knee. My knee went sideways. My foot stayed still. And I put myself in this thing and I put body trance. Yep. I put my whole body in this trance, right? Yeah. Fought the whole fight, won it, no problem. But what the problem was, was um, I, was, I was promised Tarek Solak, the super promoter, number one promoter in the world, that I wouldn't hurt myself for the four weeks later for Australia's biggest grudge match against Gurk and Oscar. <laughs> and I have, which so it didn't go down well. So he's had to move the whole show. He made it 12 weeks later, which I'm just about, I'm meant to be getting out of the plaster. And um, so I've really trained probably three weeks. So I wasn't properly prepared for that fight. Yep. Yep. Half the crowd didn't come because I didn't think I'd show up. Yep. I didn't think I'd beat him on my best day. The heart of the battle, the greater the glory, and there was no heart of battle in this one, man. Mate. Seriously, first round, I get out there, I'm fighting him, I crack my patella, I bust my sternum, punches me, drops me, I'm blind in my night in the first round. I go back to the corner, there's a fight over me, man. I'm absolutely, I mean, feel like I've been run by 10 buses, and, it, and it's what I chose to do. Now, yeah. when you choose to be a world champion, I don't believe there's any other harder challenge you can make yeah. as a human being. You know what I mean? But if you do, there's no, if you win, you lose. You have to give it everything you've got, and that's what it takes. And I was broken. And my trainer, this part of my trainer, he picks my chin up. Yep. And he says, Ian, I've never asked anything for me. Win this fight for me, win this fight for yourself, win this fight for your family. And I've just looked at him and just gone, yeah, because that's who we are. You know, yep. we train for this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I won the fight then. My trainer yep. won me that fight. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. without a doubt, Wayne Spencer and I wouldn't be the person I am without him. Yeah, I've had plenty of other great trainers along the way, you know, when we've stopped training. Yeah. But um, Master Wayne Spencer, mate, is phenomenal. So, and the, the, the fight was close enough that it probably could have gone their way, you know what I mean? Like, it was really empty, but um, it was good. Obviously, the last two rounds in Muay Thai kickboxing, you score higher with um, knees and kicks, and you can see that the points would have got you. Like you said, it could have gone either way, but the points would have got you. Well, my, again, my trainer, because I couldn't see, if you watch it quite closely, I'm punching here and I'm punching there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My trainer said to me, he goes, knee, then punch, then grab again, knee, and yeah, yeah, punch yeah. that knee, so you know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's last round. So that's ah, that, it's through. funny you say that, because it looked like your range was off. Yeah, it's close, I couldn't see, that was blowing my eyes. The winner is from the blue corner. Alright, okay now, Ian actually has to go check in, so we're going to hit a few uh, quick questions straight up. Now, you do a lot of um, training programs, community-based initiatives, yep. tell us a little bit about that quickly and we will be able to touch on this put links, obviously. In the yeah, fantastic. The number one program that I'm running right now is called the World Champion Experience, and off that we have a whole heap of different programs that we do. Predominantly, we, we generate youth in middle-aged men and women, yep. that's our target. Um, we get them fitter, younger, healthier, live longer, disease prevention, all that sort of stuff. Then we do a pride program, father, son, daughter, like children's program. We do a safe program, securing a family's environment, awareness, prevention, communication, control, and all that sort of stuff. The programs are life changing. We do two hour workshops, so you can come and experience what we do, and that, that'll change your life straight away. And then if you want to go into a program, we've got other programs and courses and stuff like that that yeah. up that and personal trainers. Okay. Awesome. The world champion experience of com.au. Check it out. Also, you're on a plane now to go to America. I could tell them, you'll say it better. Why are you going to America? Made a really good friend of mine sitting there talking to a movie producer over there um, and, 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 and a good movie producer. And uh, I can't say who just yet, but they've rung me up at 3 o'clock in the morning because he's shown him my knockout and he's told him a bit about my life. He goes, mate, that's a movie. Is he interested? Rung me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, hang on. Uh, yeah, of course. So it's something I've always wanted to do. I've got an amazing story to tell, so watch out for the movie. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be really, really cool. I just don't know how we're going to feel when we're like, <laughs> that's right, no, no, that's what they do best. That's, that's right. awesome, bad stuff. Um, mate, I cannot thank you enough. I'm absolutely humbled that you would give me your time to be interviewed for the F1 Fit series, mate. Can't wait to see how the movie progresses, but also hopefully we can uh, catch up again, have a bit more chat about the community-based initiatives and that. So. Yeah, excellent. Awesome. Cool.
world champ, top bloke, just all round good guy. Um, look him up, world champ experience, put yourself in and get yourself on the way to achieving whatever it is you want. This is how Ian Jacobs, absolute fit. <laughs> Will ring rust affect Ian Jacobs? Oh, oh, that's what the pick. He's hurt oh. him! My word, one strike! He's a champion! One kick and it's good night, Irene! I cannot believe what I've seen. The fastest knockout in kickboxing history. <laughs> for the highlight reel, flying front kick, one shot on stand. <laughs> Unbelievable. Off the power leg stand, he chambered the back leg to the front. He switched up. That was full power airborne. Oh my word, I have never, ever in all of my days seen anything like that.